My name is John Dormans. I am one of the past presidents of the Scoliosis Research Society working in Houston, Texas, here to talk about living with scoliosis. Patients and families often ask if their curve will progress or get worse. In general, it can be a difficult question to, to answer. The, the general rule is that the younger you are when you develop a significant curve, the higher the likelihood of the curve getting worse. Second feature is that if the curve is larger or bigger, the chances are that it will progress uh, at a higher rate, more likely. Uh, the curve pattern can be a predictor for curve progression. For example, thoracic curves tend to progress more than lumbar curves. For double curves or S-shaped curves, those with a right thoracic and left lumbar tend to progress more than other types of double curves. Patients will sometimes ask if their scoliosis can be cured, and the answer to that is really no. Curves can be managed. Um, it's important to realize that anything under 10 degrees, a side-to-side -side curve of the spine under 10 degrees is really not considered scoliosis. If it's over 10 degrees, then it's the real thing. It is scoliosis. Um, but really, the only way to manage uh, a significant curve is with bracing and or surgery. Bracing is indicated for curves over 25 degrees or so. Uh, in a growing patient, surgery generally for patients with the most common form, adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, are only considered for surgery if the curve is over 45 to 50 degrees. The form of evaluation and with, with what uh, healthcare professional really depends on lots of variables. If, if the curve is under 10 degrees and a patient is done growing, they probably do not need to see a spine specialist or orthopedic surgeon. If, however, the curve is significant, let's say over 25, 30 degrees, and it's a young child who is actively growing, that would warrant an investigation. So it really depends on different variables, age, magnitude, rate of progression, whether or not there are other associated variables like back pain or neurologic findings or other diagnoses, etc. The genetics of scoliosis uh, is evolving. We're learning more and more about it. The most common type of scoliosis is adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, and there's a genetic component. Um, there are many different genes that are being discovered that are associated with that particular type of scoliosis, uh, and you really don't pass it on to your children, but if you have significant adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, your children have a higher chance of also having that, but it's not a one-to-one -one, um, association. It's, it's more like 20%, 30% chance that your children would have that. Uh, but it's what we call multifactorial uh, in its inheritance.